All right, here we go. I've decided we're gonna we're gonna test this thing out. I've always kind of stuck with the cheaper uh, wallboard hoppers, but after a few months of use, they always get bound up and they stop working. I do love the fact that these hoppers have a uh, an air on uh, before the material flow because it's a little bit more like a real spray machine. But these used to be sixty nine dollars. You could almost consider them a throwaway. Now they're $130 or 129 something like that. So I figured for that same price, we can try this setup. Um, this was, I think, $51. These were $8 a pop uh, versus that's now $14. So I know it's a lot more, but uh, when we're doing touch-up, where'd the can texture go, bud? Is it in your truck? Yeah. So normally for touch up and little tiny repair work, um, I have had great luck with the um, the oil based texture, with a combination of the water based texture to the, the red can and then the orange can. A lot of you guys out there, a lot of you guys out there give me a lot of crap for that, but you know what? Screw it. Um, it works for me. If you can't figure out how to make it work for you, uh, that's not my problem. It, I can I can really make uh, these cans of texture blend pretty well for our Pacific Northwest type of uh, orange peel uh, spray texture. Um, I know they're probably not the best for big knockdown or, or a real heavy, heavy uh, orange peel, but for what we get a lot around here, I can do a pretty good job of that. I do run a, a, a CO2, a carbon dioxide tank every once in a while. Um, if we don't wanna use a small little compressor, um, we have these available. Uh, I just happen to get all of them filled up. I use them for other things too. I'm also kind of curious to see how well this holds up as far as durability. Um, you know, if I'm going through, if I have to buy one every, you know, three, six, six to 12 months, like I do these, um, that will kind of suck as well. Um, all right, let's, uh, I'll take you guys inside and show you what we're doing with this. All right, guys, so what we're using today is this 10 pound CO2. We only have about, I don't know, two, three minutes worth of spraying to do. Two things you got to really be careful. Number one, that it's on a durable floor surface because if you use this a lot, it will actually freeze and stick to the ground. So don't put it over a finished floor that you care about. Um, so make sure it's on a durable floor surface. Two, not all regulators are designed for constant flow. So make sure you know what regulator you're using. And the other one is lots of fresh air. So we have a window that's wide open there. We've got in that little area, that window will be wide open. So we'll have lots of fresh air. So here we go, we're gonna do a little spray and see what it looks like. Impressed. That was one bag. It was probably, I don't know, get a third of what we had to do with one bag. Would that be able to do one can? Oh no, one can couldn't have done nearly that much. I don't know if I, it's probably because I'm still not very experienced at it, but I'm not sure. I feel like I have as much control with it. I do with a can, but um, it's, it's definitely a lot slower than a hopper. So a hopper would probably be better for this apparatus, this situation. Are you, are you on? Yeah, but to be matching pretty well. Over here, so we can open this up. Now, 
don't like that shadow right there. Couldn't feel it. Hopefully it doesn't show up after paint. It definitely has a suction to it. Alright, one more bag. Can I hand it to me? Alright. So be careful with your tanks because they're not all designed to be able to do this. Be gentle with it while it's, while it's got that much frost and freeze through it. I guess one thing I should have said is I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not paid by them. It's just a product that I've seen in the paint shops and Home Depot and stuff like that for a long time. And I thought um, it was pretty gimmicky. I haven't watched any YouTube videos or on anything like that, so I don't know what everybody else's reactions are with it. But, um, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty all right. <laughs> um, I got a little bit of a learning curve, but if you're any kind of a, if you have any kind of drywall experience with spraying or anything like that, I, I think it, the learning curve is pretty small. Um, if I had gone on the manufacturer's website or YouTube channel, I probably could have um, probably could have softened that learning curve a little bit, but I kind of wanted to do it all on my own and see, uh, maybe just be stubborn about it. I don't know. My son's laughing at me. Here, laugh at this. Um, what's that? I'm not, I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing at myself. Oh, okay. Um, I am a professional drywall finisher and a professional home professional. builder. Professional. Um, so, yeah, there we go. I don't know if this is ever going to get seen or not, but hey, I made it.